Yeah, 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 man. You already know what the fuck it is, man. DJ Jerry, a.k.a. the voice of the streets. It's that motherfucking Mixtape Trappers Radio, man. I got a goat in the building, man. Special guest, man. The legend, man. The 414 father, ho. Baby Drew, what's happening? Oh, what's up? What's up, man? <laughs> I, I mean, I ain't know for real. I ain't know what was going on. I thought somebody was into it, man. You know, <laughs> you know, Jerry, be up, man. I'm a, uh, yeah, the goat. The, the gorilla, the homie. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? Mixtape Trappers, my man, DJ Jerry. Baby Drew, what's up? What's happening with it? What's good, man? Hey, I, fi- I finally got you up here, bro. Okay. I finally got you up here. You know what I'm saying? I, like I told, I told everybody, man, all the old school niggas. I was like, man, I got to do this motherfucker right, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to respond, man. You got to. I should have some cue cards and stuff. <laughs> like, why, you, why you just tell the old people? Like you should just told everybody. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, but, now I feel you, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Hey, but you know, like I ain't gonna lie, bro. We got we got straight something out right here on Mixtape Charles Radio, bro. About uh, you know what I'm saying? You've been lying to the people, man, for all these years, bro. You, You've been saying you five six, bro. I don't believe you, bro. Um, bro, unless I'm on it for some reason, <laughs> I don't see why I, can, I don't seem like it matter. But yeah, yeah. that's how I check. But you know, I mean, sometimes, sometimes you know, as years go on, they say your bones shrink a little bit. But I pretty much believe I'm I'm sixty six inches. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, that made my last checkup. But like I said, I don't understand what, like, was I on my warning for something? Like, <laughs> nah. You know oh, yeah. Because, like, yeah. you know, it's known for your nah, music. Yeah. You say it a lot oh, of your yeah, music. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? 5'6". Six. Six. Yeah. Okay. But what, well, you think I'm shorter or taller? I think you're shorter, bro. Because oh, I'm 5'5", five, five, bro. Well, ain't nobody never asked me for no height anyway. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I say 5'6", it sounds good. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Hell yeah. But shit, man, we got a new president, you know what I'm saying, of the United States, man. How you feel about that shit? Do you think it's going to change anything, or you think it ain't going to, everything going to be the same for us? Um, my thoughts, uh, I know for a fact, I mean, if history, if I recall right, like it never, it never, it never changed. Uh, I mean, if it do change something, it'll be, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the, like, I don't think it'll better anybody's life or nothing like that. Like, unless a president get elected and start like, uh, giving away checks and money for free and you don't got to go to work or, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no more pro race. I, I mean, cause you can't change people's minds. Even if you're the president, you can't change the way and how people think. I mean, because people are born that way, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, for us to for us to think that any party, uh, donkey or elephant, could change the way what people got on their minds and what go on in the world, I think that's like I think that's a real, real far fetched. That that come with a whole different election. You got to vote. You got to vote. You got to be. You got to hold. You got to. Uh, you got to be up under a whole different uh, leg- legislation. It's, it's 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 number with a man up above. That's that's the only person who you can really vote for. You know what I'm saying? In order, in order, in order to change your life, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's not gonna be the bike because you really just voting for two pimps and whoever got the best game gonna win. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Whoever say what you want to hear, then that's who you are gonna vote for. But at the end of the day, of all these years, what's this? The forty something president? Forty six. Yeah, I don't think nobody ever. You know what I'm saying? I don't think nobody ever said, uh, "Okay, now nah, everybody would be treated equal," and it happens. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be our Messiah. I'm gonna come save y'all because right now, if I don't go on too long with this. I'm not a Trump fan or I'm not against Joe Biden, but I'm more comfortable. Don't hate on me, nobody. But to me, let them have the, the office because at the end of the day, when the, when the wrong office get in there, we, somebody going to have to pay for it because uh-huh. somebody going to get mad. You know what I'm saying? The people that get mad that we got, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, can I say nigga lover yeah, in office. If want. somebody get mad at nigga lover in office, we got to pay for that. Like, we get pulled over on the dark alley and the dark road. We can't call Joe Biden. You know what I'm saying? Say, man, tell me. I voted for you. Shit, you're going to be for yourself, out there by yourself, and that's going to be some redneck Trump supporter out there or, you know what I'm saying, some person that's really, really actually racist. You know what I'm saying? That I'm talking about Trump is Trump is like uh, Mr. Rogers compared to <laughs> how racist some of these people really is. Oh, yeah. And they're going to be like, yeah, nigga, with your voting ass, take this. Right. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't, they, they ain't nobody going to care. Ain't nobody going to come say you. Nobody, I don't care who you voted for. You know what I'm saying? Man, you get pulled over out there and one of them motherfuckers really, really mad about this shit that, that's going on, especially since he's saying he got cheated. That's a whole setup, you know what I'm saying? And if you're talking about the uprise, they don't march, they don't march in protests like we do. Exactly. They get down. Mm-hmm. They walk in and shoot shit up, right on up. You know what I'm saying? They ain't with all that. They ain't gonna even act like they're gonna be on no peaceful shit. You know what I'm saying? They ain't like, we we finna come to let y'all ass have it. No bullshit. Yeah, when they get mad, ain't none of that shit. But go ahead. We- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but shit, uh, did you even vote, though? Like, did you even vote for anybody? Is that your business? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, that, I mean, that, that's kind of confidential. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I voted, you know what I'm saying? I did vote, but I don't think they mailed mine in yet. Right. Yeah, I don't think it got mine. I'm going to mail in vote. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't even know if I sent it off or whatever. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I, think I, I think I called somebody to vote for me. Yeah, Drew you know ain't voting. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. good though. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's all right, good. Right. Though. Yeah, but I, yeah, I did. I did. I did. I actually voted. it. Okay. Hell yeah, but sure, uh, a lot of people like a lot of your fans. They they know. They probably don't know you was born in Chicago, right? This is true. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was born in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. L- like what uh, part of Chicago are you from? I was born, I was, uh, when I was born, when I was when I was born, we lived on 61st and Eberhardt. That's like in the Inglewood area, like uh, near Kings Drive, Cottage Grove, that that area over mm-hmm. there, South Side. Right. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, what was it like? You know what I'm saying? Growing up in the shop. Um, I actually grew up in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee. Mean, okay. We, I mean, it was a back and forth situation. You know what I'm saying? I was in a like I was in one of them households, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Moms and pops, they ain't always get along. You know what I'm saying? Even though I come from a family setting, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It wasn't always no good idea. It wasn't always a good, the setting always wasn't good. So we was, uh, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we, and we had family in Milwaukee, so we was like back and forth up here depending on how good or bad the situation was. And then at some point, you know what I'm saying, my mother's sister, she decided to, you know what I'm saying, make sure that uh, she made her business to make sure that, uh, that I wouldn't be, you know what I'm saying, that I wouldn't be a, a casualty of, of the environments that you know what I'm saying that we that we lived in. You know what I'm saying. She was kind of doing, she was kind of doing the good. You know what I'm saying. As far as she was an activist, my auntie came. She was an activist and she was a social worker and things like that. So her and my mama agreed. You know to let me. You know what I'm saying. Just let just let me stay up there. You know what I'm saying. Like don't don't keep doing them back and forth, getting them in and out of school. So and this happened when I was 11. 11. Okay. And then fast forward to high school where I was. You know what I'm saying. I was expelled for a semester. And so I was actually living back and forth during my during my teenage years, but I actually grew up here in Milwaukee, you okay. know what I'm saying, we Fifth and Center Street, you know what I'm saying, then moved, you know, and then 40, 50, but yeah, other than that, yeah, I was born and raised, I'm still born, I'm, I'm like one of my only family members that, you know what I'm saying, from my immediate family, that live in Milwaukee, like my family still, we are of and live in Chicago still, like my sisters and parents and stuff, they all still live in Chicago and like the majority of my family. Okay, that's what it is. So, doing. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, like, like what do the east side mean to you though, uh, from like being, living in the, and basically being raised in Milwaukee. It's um uh, it's the east I love the east side. You know what I'm saying? And it had its it has its uh I'm gonna say it has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. But the east side, um one thing I can say is uh what I did get, I did get a lot of um uh, what I wanna say, camaraderie and um family. You know what I'm saying? I had a it was like a family orientated like yeah. it wasn't just a block or or you know what I'm saying or a street. It was it was like an area. It was like a, it was like a set. So it was like a real, real family oriented uh, thing. Where and I learned a lot of. I learned how to. I learned how to accept love. I learned how to give love, and I learned how to be a. Uh, I learned how to do a lot of other things. That, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> which helped me. You know what I'm saying? Which when I when I when I applied it, you know what I'm saying? It helped me. It, it gave me survival skills. You know what I'm saying? I learned how to. I learned how to know. I know how to. I know. How, I, I learned how to know when to go. I learned how to know when to. You know what I'm saying? When to back up off it and things like that. But you got, I mean, just like anywhere else, you got people who, you got people who teach you good and bad, and you, you got people who teach you how to get out of, you know what I'm saying, how to wipe the shit off your shoes once you stepped in it. But then you got people who, you know what I'm saying, once you step in it, they want to get away from you because you go to stanking real bad, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you, you, I mean, the East Side, I mean, the East Side I mean a lot to me. I was, you know what I'm saying, I got a lot of, I learned a lot, like I said, as far as survival skills go, you know what I'm saying, as far as learning how to take care of your own and shit like that. But as time went on, I learned a lot of other shit on the east side, you know what I'm saying? As as people grow, you know what I'm saying? I learned that, you know what I'm saying, you you don't whatever I mean, whatever happens to you, you know what I mean? it's gonna be every man for themselves at some point. Bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So I learned I know I know how friends go from being friends and then it's like shit. Ain't no more ain't ain't, ain't, ain't no more of that uh showing no love shit. I done had, I done had family and kids and shit like that. Yeah. So we can't be the family we used to be. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not, you know what I'm saying? He was like, I'm not getting in trouble for him because I do like a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people learned, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of, like, narcissistic nar- nar- shit that went on. Like, a lot of people was for themselves and of themselves. And then a lot of people maintained their family uh, mentality that they had. So, but I am, I am other east side, and I still got a big, you know what I'm saying? I still got a big connection and a big uh, connection with them, and uh, I'm still from the east side. I still am the east side and of the east side. I'm the governor. <laughs> no, bitch. No, yeah. bullshit. <laughs> but, yeah, the east side mean a lot to me, though, at the end of the day, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, a lot of people know. A lot of your core fans know. You know what I'm saying. You was real close with uh, Bucko Five. You know what I'm saying. Like, how yeah. did how did y'all even link and meet up? Um, as as kids, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying. Like as as real real small children as kids, you know what I'm saying. And he, I mean, our both our, all our parents was from Mississippi, so it was like they was like blended into like you know 
down there is like, you know what I'm saying, like, in a cousin type of situation, like our family and our relatives. So it was like that with me and him. So we actually come up like, like always, when I say buck, when you say buck or five, like me and him brothers, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We, it wasn't, it probably didn't a day now would go by, but me and him went together and we loved each other as such. So, um, you said, how did I come about? Like, I, I really, I really don't know exactly how, but I know as, as long as I can remember, you know what I'm saying? Me and him been that way. Like I don't really, I don't really remember the story how it went where we was introduced to one another, but it, we was very, we was real young. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and we and we been we was that and we was that way until you know what I'm saying. I saying I had to say goodbye to him. Right. So you know. Yeah, yeah. Cause you actually did you start off rapping with him, or? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We start, yeah, we both we both like to rap as children. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we both love to rap. Yeah, we yeah, we had so many different names and groups. <laughs> we was known the chicks and all that before Nelly and them and all that. You know, oh, for real? <laughs> any 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 group that was popular, we wanted to be that. We you know what I'm saying. We wanted to be that tag team. So, you know what I'm saying. Then eventually, you know what I'm saying. We was like once we got in high school. You know what I'm saying. We, we had them. I don't want to say accents, but we didn't we didn't talk like everybody else because we was. I mean, we was of and from different places, and right. in that time, all the people that in Milwaukee and Wisconsin right now hadn't lived here yet. It was more of a like. It was more of a, I want to say. If I could, if I could, if I could refer or, or or make a comparison, I would say people in Milwaukee would talk something like people in California, like say car, car, like like oh, people in Wisconsin, okay. yeah, people in Wisconsin. And then we talk like, I mean, I talk the way I talk now, but it was like I had some kind of accent to him. I sounded funny to him and stuff like that. So it was like country ass niggas, woo woo, <laughs> standing like that. I don't know if it was derogatory or to the positive tip, but mm-hmm. that's what we ended up calling ourselves. We, like we we wasn't the country boy clique. We was the country boys. You know what I'm saying? Right. And we went in the studio and rapped for like dudes on the east side, uh, and that's and they was laughing and shit until we got done rapping. You know Why they was saying? laughing? Cause they ain't never heard no shit no, like that. No, we had said our name. They laughed. Oh, okay. Then, but then, then we rapped. Then they, then they, they stopped laughing. They was like, um, okay, now nah, what, what, what is it that you know what I'm saying? Now they was like, okay, this is something that we probably need to get involved in. Or this probably, you know, and it was like that, but. I guess that's another story or another question. I mean, to go on with that, like, but yeah, that's what that's how that stuff started with me and Buck Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, he uh he had a big impact in your career. You know what I'm saying? Like, how did his death like affect you? Um, it, it, it I don't I don't know, I don't know if it's a trick question, but you I mean you could I mean you could probably you could probably imagine like how I mean it hurt it hurt bad. You know, yeah, it was a it was a big loss. It's still a big loss. I think about it every day. Like that's something that it, I mean, it was, it's not a past tense. How it affected me, it, it affects me to this day. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I learned, I learned, I learned from it. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I use it for inspiration. And sometimes when I think about it, you know what I'm saying? I, I see stop signs. You know what I'm saying? But it, it did give me, it did give me a lot of, uh, it gave me a lot of thought. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I started, I started calculating more moves before I made them. Right. You know what I'm saying? But at the time when it immediately happened. I didn't. I didn't. I mean, it was. It was. It was a lot of times where I didn't think at all, and then sometimes I thought, you know, what I'm saying, I do need to start thinking. You know what I'm saying? So it gave me, like I said, it, just like with everything, it gave me a lot of awareness. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It gave me a lot of hurt. I, you know what I'm saying? I had never felt before. It, it was things I had never experienced before. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it, I mean, how it affected me is not a past tense. I mean, I'm still, I'm still affected by it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't think that that's, that's something that won't go away. Bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, R.P. Buck 05, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, yeah, man. But, you know, uh, the debut, you know what I'm saying, Hand to Rock the Cradle, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Steve-O, he was just up here. And he in the building, too, man. Oh, yeah. He, he yeah, said yeah, the shout first. Out, shout out Steve and Love, yeah. Yeah, Steve and Love, man. What's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve-O, be Steve-O, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he said the first time that he heard you was on Hand to Rock the Cradle. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was it like even putting that together? Uh, the Hand to Rock the Cradle? Yeah. Um, Putting out the Hand to Rock the Cradle, Um, to tell you the truth, that was something that uh, I recorded out of frustration, actually, and that was right after that was right after the passing of Buck Five, and um, we was in a we was in the middle of recording a, um, the Country Boy album out of our records, as I you know what I'm saying I'm always and forever will be a part of that. We was recording that, and um, it seemed like things were moving fast enough for me, mm-hmm. and uh, I just so happened to have other friends on the east side. Her name is Sean Flipping. Um, she go by the name of Satin. And she was like, well, what's taking so long, this, that, and the other? So a friend of mine, Ruben Woodman, we got together, and she was like, well, if you want to just go and drop you a record right now, then you can drop you a record right now. How long do you think it'll take you? I said, said a week, I guess, a week or two, I guess. Mm-hmm. I want to come out now. And it went just like that. You know what I'm saying? The Hannah Roddy Crater. I'm, uh, as a matter of fact, it happened then early summer. I'm going to say spring, summer, 
Friends in summer of 98, mm-hmm. and it was released by, uh, it was released by, um, I want to say November, December of that year. But uh, I remember, I remember uh, my son was just born. That's why I named it the Hannah the Cradle, because his mother was pregnant with him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And she actually appeared on one of the songs, and then the, 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 way, the way I found out that it was actually about to drop, I was taking him on his, uh, I think it was a one or two week checkup, whatever the first checkup they get, I was riding doing the same marriage. Yeah. And I looked in the sky and I was like, damn, that's me. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? It was a billboard with a hand around the cradle, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I still had a sub captured on the side of it that said, coming soon, Mr. Goldfang from out of our records because it wasn't like I had jumped my label to go do it. But I didn't wait on my label to drop me while I did it, you know what I'm saying? It was a solo effort, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, Shit, I'm, I do a Baby Drew Project 105 record dedicated to my brother. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? While I'm waiting on the Out of Our Record, you know what I'm saying, project to come out because it was just a, um, I think it was just a much, I think it was a much longer process um, mm-hmm. for Out of Our Record. So we was like putting a lot of effort and you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of effort and money put behind that too. Okay. But we, I had a, it, was a, it was a big family, a lot of producers. It was a lot of involvement going on, you know what I'm saying, with, with that. So I'm not saying that we were slacking or lacking, but it was like, well, I guess I can go do this right quick while I wait. You know what yeah. I'm saying, but I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't two, three months later. Then you got the Goldfinger single come out right behind that, right. and then followed by Power. So, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it was a it was a nice run. It was a nice run. Consecutive belts I was winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, but what even made you and Derek know wouldn't even come together for the Powder, bro? Because Powder, like, is arguably like one of the best uh, projects to ever come out of Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying, like. That's what all my OGs tell me, bro. That they say powder, you know what I'm saying, is a classic. I, I met I met Derek Note, not to cut you off with you done. Yeah. I met Derek Note. Um, like I said, I was on the east side. I was with the Dime Breed record label. Yeah. And we was they had already they had just dropped uh, a Dime Breed compilation and at the bottom of the poster we was next on the on the roster and Derek Note. We was all friends. Um we was all childhood friends anyway, and I didn't even know Derrick Note was down with him, but I already had knew him. Right. And but he was rapping with him first, and he was denote the young gun, and then it was the country boys coming up next. So, um, uh, back to uh, Eric Hudson, Buckle Five passing, I was like, man, I'm done with this shit, this that, and the other, because we was all tight. We had did a song together, all three of us called Dirty Money, mm-hmm. and um, uh, I'm, I'm at the I'm over the casket. I'm like, man, I'm done with this shit, man. Fuck this shit. Woo. He was like, man, let me be your partner. If we stand over his dead body when he said that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And then, then there's history after that, you know what I'm saying? Then we, we went in there and we dropped that shit. Bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, who idea was it to um, do the Ice-T cover? You know what I'm saying? Like, Because it's, it's, it's like the Ice-T power cover. That was my idea. Okay. Uh, what, what made it's you do that? I don't, I don't know. I was just thinking of different. I had always been making sketches. Uh, I used to practice my autograph. I used to practice with the Country Boy logo, what I wanted to look like and things like this. So. Yeah. Um, and the person who was behind the whole uh, graphic part of it and, you know, the creative process of it, he was really, like, always asking me for my ideas because he wanted me to be my idea. So first it was a $100 bill disintegrating into a pile of drugs, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And as nice as it looked, it, I didn't want it to be that obvious, you know what I'm saying, or that, you know what I'm saying, because I wanted it to be more general and I wanted it to be, you know what I'm saying, that, so at the same time I wanted to get some people something familiar to look at, mm-hmm. and then I wanted to be kind of clever, so I just put the D in power. You know what I'm saying, so and, so it was my idea, but I did I didn't want to take a live picture of it because I knew it wouldn't come out. I knew it wouldn't come out as good, so I didn't want to. As the same when I wanted to give I wanted to give homage to it and celebrate that album cover. I see I didn't want to destroy it either. Right. By putting my live picture on there, so I just decided to make it a uh, what's you call it when you say animated or yeah. whatever. I, I decided to make it a cartoon, you know, more more of that look. You know what I'm saying? Just so you'll know it's a tribute other than a copy. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So. But uh, did you have any issues behind that or no? No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, that's what it do, man. Hey, yeah, but shit, like, like, why do you think that album, like, you got plenty of albums, Barbecue, Mildew, uh, Ghetto Hero, uh, like, you got plenty of classic albums, you know what I'm saying? Right. Free, free. Right. Yeah, like, right. like, that's a slept on album to me, too, free. Right. But, uh, like, why do you think Pow- Powder went so hard, you know what I'm saying, I, out of all the albums? I, I believe it went harder than the other albums because it was the first time Milwaukee had ever seen or heard something like that, you know what I'm saying, from somebody that was from Milwaukee. Right. That I mean, it was it wasn't it wasn't like it was more talent on that album. Actually, as far as when I if you listen to it in comparison, like I mean, like I said, I like all my kids the same. Right. But when it come down to it, I you know what I'm saying. It, I mean, it never disintegrated as far as talent went or as far as sound went, other than mastering part. But um, that was just because like just the first time you don't ever see or hear anything. It's not gonna ever be. It's like the first. It's like the first time you uh. 
first time you do anything, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna never feel like that no more. First, yeah. first time you do, first time you do something, it ain't gonna never be like that. I mean, that's just like you fuck with a bitch. You ain't gonna never feel the same way every time you fuck with her. Eventually, you get tired of her. So, you know what I'm saying? They had never seen nothing like that. They had never had no. They had never had no this kind of drug before. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that time, but when they when they start hitting the other drugs, they they just it was just something. You know what I'm saying? They it was just a familiar drug to them. But the first time they hit it, it was like God damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm proud to say, and I'm thankful to say, they still addicted to this day. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying. So, yes. and I still got you know what I'm saying. My following is still my following. Thank you know what I'm saying. I don't take it for granted. I, th- I thank God and I thank my public. Exactly. So yeah, but I, I I believe that's the reason. Why that it you know what I'm saying that it's always that it always get it always get more always get more respect and it always get the utmost respect because it was the first time that they heard this type of sound coming from here as somebody that they could look and shake hands with every day. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just nobody from far, far away that they can't brush up against with this sound. Like this me, I know this nigga, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like this baby Joe, I know him. And he I, I'm, he sound like you know what I'm saying, he said that that's him right here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause they was even getting a piece of it before it even dropped. So I made them a part of it, you know what I'm saying? And, and I, w- I was discussing, I was discussing some of uh, the incidents and the, and the situations on that record was they wasn't about, they wasn't actually about personally, my personal. They, they, these was about, this was about, you know what I'm saying? Mostly what I write is for the average Milwaukee nigga. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? These weren't all baby Drew stories. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It was they was just they was just movies I was directing. You know what I'm saying? These was these was movies I was directing, and, I, and sometimes I was playing roles. Uh, people that I seen, you know what I'm saying. So it was, it was a lot of script, and, it, and I mean, and, and make a long story short, I even went to a lot of '70s movies and stuff like that, and got a lot of dialect from that. I got a dialect. I would ask people like, "How much do that shit really cost? Did that sound right?" You know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying and stuff like that. So I was really, I was just really, I was just really talking about what was going on around me and what I seen, and different tales, different stories, and like I said, different movies. Shit, I synced up close. Shit, I didn't never want to see again. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, it, and that's how that was. Bullshit. But who who did the most of the production on that on the on the powder? Uh, I can't I can't really say it because I'm not looking at the credits. Okay. So I don't want to discredit anybody or no. But I know Jay Biller did production on there. Yeah. Uh, Logo Lamont, his name Lo- Lamont. Uh, he did production on there. Show Mac, mm-hmm. who did he also produced Goldfinger, and me and Derek Note, which together the team we were there doing productions. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I don't know who did the most of the work. You know what I'm saying? But I know. Oh, and Charles Chuck Jones. He did like he played a lot of uh, you know he did he helped with a lot of production he played a lot of instruments and stuff like that P Dub mm. Patrick P Dub Patterson he played a lot of live music on there you know what I'm saying and stuff like that yeah, yeah. so yeah I can't really say who did the most of it I think it was a big team effort you know what I'm saying so I don't know who scored the most points that's what it do yeah yeah because I know you and Big Hank you know what I'm saying y'all like y'all like Gucci and Zay you know what I'm saying uh-huh. like like y- y'all like uh, Quincy and, and and Mike you know what I'm saying like uh, yeah. <laughs> okay like, like like how did y'all link how did you and Big Hank link up. Like after that, um, me and Big Hank, me and Big Hank linked up uh, due to some uh, just some unfortunate, uh, just some unfortunate like situations that came about. Um, uh, like after and during the out of eye situation and okay. during that run, we, I mean, like the whole our whole family. Like once we, I'm gonna put it like this: when you dance with the devil, uh, pretty soon the devil gonna want you to dance for him. You know what I'm saying? So when the devil wanted to start dancing for him, he came for he came for us. So. I mean, it was a uh, it was a situation where I was blessed enough, you know what I'm saying, that the, the, that the people, you know what I'm saying, that the, the, the big leadership role, to play the big leadership role, they made sure I had no involvement in nothing that happened. You know what I'm saying? It was a, it was a, it was a lot of legal shit that went down and illegal shit went down, so it, it had collapsed our company. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I had the blessings of the CEO at the time, Pete Woods. Man, him was like we really, really, we was really tight then, and we still are. Yeah. I had the blessings of the time to deal with. Um, uh, Infinite Recording and Steve, Steve on Steve Love. So he actually, he actually joined us together as a produ- producer rapper uh, team. It was actually his, actually his efforts. You know what I'm saying? That wanted that wanted me to, uh, that wanted me to go forward. You know what I'm saying? Didn't want to see me stop doing what I was doing. He seen he, I mean, he seen something in me that he didn't want to see me, uh, you know, go to waste or whatever situation is. Because I mean, you can see what Idle Time could do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and then even sometimes he couldn't even he 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 couldn't save me from having out of time, and you know what I'm saying, just like not doing what I was supposed to be doing, and not can not you know what I'm saying, not applying myself like I should have been doing. But he always he always made it his he always made it his business, and you know what I'm saying, apply a lot of pressure to me as far as put my talent to work. You know what I'm saying, and yes. making sure he did what it took. You know what I'm saying to put me in a situation where I could utilize my talent, my voice, and my skills. You know what I'm saying, and 
Like, even when I want to, even when I want to hang the phone up, you know what I'm saying, he made sure the line stayed open for me. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So I thank him for that. But that's how that, but that's how that came about with me and Big Hank. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, man. Like, like we said earlier, you got a lot of big songs. Disco Lady, uh, Goldfingers, uh, Why Body uh, Why, you know what I'm saying? But Why Body Why? You am a fun nigga. Why everybody ride, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> you know what the fuck I was talking about, nigga? <laughs> like, what, nigga? Like, I ain't make that one yet. But <laughs> like, why everybody ride? Like, it's our big as a moment. Like, that's the new one. That's right. The, <laughs> that's, that's the 2020. Right. 2020 ride by. Yeah, I know what you mean, though. Yeah, yeah. everybody ride, yeah, ride, man. Ride. Yeah, it is a tongue twister, yeah. too, though. <laughs> if you don't say it all the time. <laughs> but but all, out of all those songs, man, I don't give a fuck what nobody talk about, man. That, that, that pussy, like, that's my favorite Baby Drew song, man. Man, that's my favorite thing to be with. Man, me too, dog. Like, yeah. man, like, that's the second best feeling besides being with my kids, man. Pussy. Oh, for real. I can't say that. I like being with pussy more than I like being with my kids. I can't say that. Bro. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit. We have fun. I love my kids, but, <laughs> but I like pussy a lot. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I be with my kids, I don't really be feeling like being bothered. Yeah. I, I always but, like being bothered with pussy. See, hey, see, like. If you no, would, you know, I'm just playing. No. <laughs> them two different. They, them, hey, them, hey, them two situations. Hey, them two. They, hey, I don't even know how you started that shit because kids and pussy didn't even come in the same sentence. They come together, though. No. Nah. I had to get the pussy to have a kid. I guess so. See, they come together, man. I guess. <laughs> I guess. I guess that is that is true. They come together. That's what I'm yeah, saying, man. Yeah, they come, yeah. Kids, then pussy. Right. I'm good. Right. But, I, but, but once they get here, man, just leave. Just separate. <laughs> get the just fuck separate. Just separate the two, man. Yeah, yeah. Cause I don't like thinking about that. That made me feel funny. Like, I don't, I don't even want to put them in the same building. Right, yeah. My kids be gone somewhere. Matter of fact, I'll be, I'll be somewhere else. Oh, the real? Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but, but like, what's, like, I know, man, you a vet, man. You a young OG, man. Like, like what's the best pussy Drew have ever had and what's the worst pussy Drew ever had? Are you had? talking to me? Yeah. I'm a vet and I'm a young OG. You got to pick which one you're going to call me. All right, you a vet, man. 414 father. 414 father, I be man. Young OG too. <laughs> I didn't want to know which one because I, I, got, I got to know how I got to know how to answer this shit. Right. You're a vet, you're a young old dude. Right. What shit? I just be talking shit. Yeah, I'm a tall midget. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. You're a vet, you're a young old dude. You don't want to be like, man, you're an old dude. You're a vet. Like you're you young, man. I know, I, know, I know what you mean, baby. I'm, I'm gonna mess with you for the whole thing. Man. All right, come on, I got something for you anyway, so later. Come on, I got some... What's the rest of the question, though? No, nah. you said I'm a, I'm a vet. I'm a young old dude. Nah, okay. fuck that. You the four four father. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. What's the best piece of pussy the 4145 ever had, and what's the worst piece of pussy the 4145 ever had? Damn, you know what? Um, the worst, like, I don't really want to say people's names and stuff like no, that. Yeah, no, don't say no names. Don't say nobody's name. But actually, you saying what's the worst piece? Yeah, I ain't say who. Right, but then I'm going to tell you then. You can tell me what it was like, nigga. It was bad. It was, I mean, if, it, if, if, if it was the worst piece of pussy, that means it wasn't good. You know what I'm saying? One time in the bag. Of course, I'm not gonna remember nobody's name anyway. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, the, I mean, the best pussy I ever had, I ain't had it yet. You ain't had no best pussy. I, I ain't stopped getting pussy yet. Okay. Yeah. So I, no, no, come on, bro. You, you, Man, you ask me questions. To, you ask me questions. Cause you ask me questions like I'm a porn star. I ain't no porn. <laughs> I ain't no porn star. I, I am married, you know what I'm saying? Like, you trying to guys me some shit that get me locked out or get my food poisoned or something. Like, I got a wife and kids at home. He's like, what's the best pussy pussy you ever had? I'm like, shit, my wife. Right. Yeah. <laughs> trying to get me set up and shit. Right. Did you get that? Yeah, like, you wired or something there, man. I'm on cheaters. I'm in, I'm in a mixtape cheaters. And Jerry trying to get me caught all the fuck up and shit, man. I'm like, I ain't going to be able to go home and shit. Baby, you know I was playing. You know I got to be a rat. I got to explain why I said it. You know they don't like, you know I ain't going to have no fans if I say I'm married and shit. I like, mean, I can't say that. Yeah, no, I'll be yeah. here. That's the best I'm going to be able to do with you. On that, All right, right, man. Good looking, dog. Right. Like, that, You're welcome. Like. Yeah. Matter of fact, you asked me what I didn't want to be asked. Um, that was the question I ain't want to be asked. Don't ask me what's the best pussy I have. Man, you ain't say you was going to ask me what's the best pussy I have. Hey, you got to be ready for whatever, man. Let's make sure you're ready, man. All right. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, yeah, don't ask me that next time. All right. I, I got something for you later, too, dog. I'm going to see if you're ready, man. I got to right, see right. how quick you is on your feet. But, don't uh, do that, man. Don't, I'm right, not that on. fast. Come on, man. I we think good, you, we you good. thought I was slow just now when you asked me that. <laughs> so I ain't that good. No, go ahead, dog. All right. Yeah, but uh, like, like, that's, like I said, that's one of my favorite songs, man. Thanks, like, man. Like, like growing up, but... Uh, it, it, it just it just crazy like how do you like what made you even say man I'm about to lay this shit down I'm about to do a track about pussy I'm a ghetto boy fan 
And, okay. Um, Woody D had an album called Controversy, and he had a lot of songs. He had songs like Pussy, Pussy, Pussy. That's mm. exactly where I got that from. Okay. He had some kinky motherfucker. He had to talk about some political shit, some gangster shit. He talked about getting pussy. And he was just a real well-rounded, wild motherfucking rapper. And I, you know what I'm saying? And You know what I'm saying? And I, and I could, you know what I'm saying? And I, I contribute my, I, my, my wanting to be a rap artist. Two, you know what I'm saying? That's these one of the people in one of the groups, and I got it from Willie D. Actually, Willie D. Okay, yeah, that's what it do. Willie D. From the Ghetto Boys. Hell yeah, yeah, that's what inspired that song and Pussy Yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, but like, uh, how you? Uh, what happened with the deal with Universal? Because you was assigned to uh, Universal at one point, right? Well, you know what? That that's something that was behind the scenes. Because at, at at during that during that time, I wasn't really concerned about deals and signs and what happened with this and what happened with that. Not only did I have knowledge of it, I didn't even care, okay. and I didn't even know I asked about it. But I mean, I, I mean, I kind of know now, and I heard stories about it. But I mean, I really try to pay attention to my windshield and not the rear view. So I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen now. But that's a, that's a, that's a question. Like Steve, oh, he know more about that because I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to say nothing wrong. I wouldn't want to lie because that's something I actually don't know the details about. Okay. So like, it ain't that I don't want to answer the question. It's just like I don't know the truth. You know what I'm saying? So. so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because a lot of like me, <clears throat> like I said, me, uh, like I know you. I met you through uh, Sergeant Vote. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. My, my best yeah, friend. Was, yeah. yeah, we. Was I, was, a, I was in the building. I was actually I was in the building when he when he passed away when he was shot. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. uh, we I we was, was in, in high school. Yeah, we was in high school. Man. Like we used, nigga, we used to skip school to go to the uh, studio. He'd be like, man. Baby Drew at the studio. Come yeah. on, man. Fuck yeah. seven hour, nigga. We going to yeah. the, nigga. We about to go pull up on Drew. I was like, all right, man. Fuck it. Come yeah. on. I actually got songs with Sergeant Vote. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, and, and I got like I remember I remember when you told me you was like man I, I seen Buddy you know what I'm saying take his last breath. I did. I heard it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and I was I was down I was downstairs like I had just missed whatever the fuck had just happened because we downstairs from to go to me and Pray Boy D. We downstairs we finna go recording and somebody called in, somebody called in to my guy Dave at the time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, whatever. And I was like, what? Somebody out there shooting? Somebody in there shooting? Because we got music and headphones yeah. to sit on. And I'm like, how the fuck we ain't hear no motherfucking gunshots going off upstairs? And by this time, the police came, put everybody against the wall and said, I'm talking about not saying freeze, get down. They like putting guns on, on motherfuckers, like boom, beast to get down. And because we in the basement, we upstairs just got shot. And we downstairs in the basement. It's plenty of kind of merchandise, whatever the fuck was going yeah, on. Yeah, he was selling but, shoes. Yeah, whatever. But uh, so I'm like, God damn, like they, they, they like, I really don't know what's going on type shit. So, and um, uh, make a long story short, yeah. I don't know, yeah, uh, R.I.P. Sergeant Vo, but when you say take, yeah, I, I didn't see him take his out of breath. Right, I right. just, I heard him carrying him out. Right, right, right. right. Um, that, that's what they, that's what they were telling us that yeah. was. I yeah. guess they was familiar with it. You know what I'm saying? And, okay, yep. Yeah. But, yeah. Yep. Yeah, R.I.P. Vo, man. Yeah, R.I.P. Sergeant Vo, yep. Hey man, like I said earlier, man, I, I had some shit for you, bro. Like I gotta see a baby Drew quick on your feet, man. You the four one four father. Right. You know what I'm saying? You the real go of the city, man. I got some for you. Hold on once. We about to play a motherfucking game, man. <laughs> the shit is called the big guys box, man. Hey, look, look, look. You get 60 seconds with the box, but you got to answer each question in the box in 20 seconds or less. You ready? What, this is Johnny Carson show? Or no. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, All right, right come on, man. You I'm get ready? 60 Let's seconds, go. man. Come on. Grab the first one. Pull the first one out and read All it right. out loud, man. Let's go. Um, What steel wool household item can... Pipes used to clean their pipes. Yeah. What still will how's the uh, item can I use? Oh, um uh hey, what's the what's the real name for uh uh <laughs> a, a, chore, a chore boy uh, <laughs> whatever whatever it is, that thing. The thing you cook pots and pans with. You almost got what it what it's called? I don't know the real name. <laughs> uh, the, a Brillo pack. There you go, oh. man. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. Go to the next one, man. Baby Drew was hiding. Let's go. 1994 Buick Roadmaster or 1974 Cadillac Cruz Yeah, which one do you prefer? Um, which one running? Uh, <laughs> give me, give me the, give me, the, give me the, give me the, 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 the Ville. Give me the, get the Ville. The Ville. All right, all right, go, all right, yeah, all right, go. Go to the next one. Go, go to the next. Baby, sure what's happening? What's your will? Oh, that's the end of it. No, no, no. You got one more. Okay, freestyle about eating hoghead cheese in the summer. Yeah, let's go, Damn. man. You got twenty seconds. I was let's eating go. some hoghead cheese. The shit melted. Damn it, it's hot right now. Somebody help me. Is it hot or mild? Damn, what's my style? Give me some crackers, mixtape trappers. Get down <laughs> like I live. You know what I'm saying? Give me some spare. Give me some potted meat. I'm dead on the street. You know what I'm saying? This is what I eat. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good. <laughs> was it a... Hey, you beat that motherfucking dog. I did. You beat it. <laughs> but see, give me the point. What the fuck I win? Hey, 
<laughs> you get a bottle of Ricardo more, dog. That's you know, already yeah, mine. Yeah, no, no. You get a bottle of Ricardo right, more. You better pop that motherfucker Thanks, over. Man. Pop that motherfucker over, Drew. For real. <laughs> Yeah. Pop that motherfucker over, man. I want. I, I want. I'd rather resell it. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Sick. Ricardo Moore. This year. Ricardo this, Moore, man. man this, Steven this, Love. Man, this man walk his own. The walk, man. I, I, and I thought just because I was part of the promotion team, I did. <laughs> I thought he would just give me some. Like, you know where they sell it at? Right. Twenty of a cap, man. Yeah. Where they can pull up. Yeah. He just told me I could open it a little while ago if I needed. It. I was like, damn, man. I want something to drink. He, he was like, eh. <laughs> Pop them up, yeah, Ricardo them more, man. Drink like a boss. Yeah, like a boss. Eating hog and cheese. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Woo. Yeah, what the that fuck was going on? That was impressive right there. She told God you, man. damn. I'd have some wild ass rolls behind that <laughs> Mad Dog 2020. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh Hell man, yeah. only on man, only on mixtape. Only on mixtape charms, man. You ain't yeah, gonna find the shit nowhere else, man. Man, big fun, big fun. Right. Man, I'm sweating like a motherfucker. <laughs> I was under pressure like a motherfucker. Like damn, <laughs> what's behind door number one? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, but like, hey, was it a big deal back in the day? You know, like I, I know it was on one song on Kill Walkie. You said, uh, you said you, you skirted off the parking lot. You left the sticker price on the windshield. You know what I'm saying? Was that a big thing back in the day? Leaving the, what you paid for it on the windshield of the car. I don't know. I just thought it sounded good. Okay. Like I never did that. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like I just I seen people doing it. I thought it looked kind of silly, but <laughs> at the same time, shit, I was like, shit, I'll make it sound like a big deal. <laughs> right. but like shit, I thought it looked dumb as hell in real life. <laughs> it sounded like something stick to say. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I was just saying that to say shit. It's brand spanking new. You right. know what I'm saying? Like. Still got the sticker price on the windshield. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded real good, but yeah. The bullshit. Yeah, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a big deal to me, you know what I'm saying? It was just, uh, I just thought I said. Yeah, yeah. And then you remembered it too, so I guess it worked. It's cold, bro. I, yeah. I remember. My man. Remember. Right? You produced the album, right? <laughs> no, I was just talking shit. Okay. I, yeah, well, I put it together, basically. Right, yeah, okay, put, yeah. Yeah, I put it together. Yeah, you sure did, because you was the one that called me about it. Oh, the real. I said, Drew, man, I, I need you to pull up, man. We got to do the video, all that shit. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, man, about that Dr. Grind, man. That shit on the way, man. Or is it out right now? When, when the release date? Um, it'll be born on November 9th. November 9th, man. A couple yesterday, days. Yes, indeed. Dr. Grind, yep. Hell yeah. yeah but it's it's, it's, it's going to be it's, it's be a real treat. You know what I'm saying? Like, and was you going to ask me something? Oh, uh, yeah. I was about to say, like, you know what I'm saying? What made you even say, man? Because I heard the intro, man. Steve, Steve was on your ass. He wanted you to drop again. He said he needed one more platinum album, man. Like, what made you want to say, man, I'm about to get in the booth. I'm about to drop another one. What do you think? The money. Shit. The so, money. Hey, <laughs> hey, get paid. Hey, 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 you better say it then. Cause, yeah. Hey, Steve, he really, really, really persuades me. Really, really, like, he really, really, like, you know what I'm saying? He'll make you be like, for real? Yeah. I bet. You know what I'm saying? And he make, and he make good moves, and it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And because I was actually, I ain't going to say retired, but, like, rapping is, like, a lot of cats, like, come on, let's go to the studio, let's fuck around, let's go, you know. Rapping is my job. You know what I'm saying? So, it took it took a lot of persuasion. It took a lot of persuasion, which Steve O is a king of persuasion. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? And he got a lot of good you know what I'm saying? He got a lot of good intentions and he got he do a lot of work. Like he don't just want you to make an album, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're doing a record with him, he actually works with you and for you, you know what I'm okay. saying? So it ain't just like no more it ain't like no motherfucker just selling you some dreams or some promises. Like he doing a project with you, he doing a project with you. Okay. So and I had a lot of you know what I'm saying? I had a lot of creative input on it, and he got, and he assured me that I would be able to get that. That's one thing that I wanted to, because one reason why I was hesitant to reappear was mm. I couldn't get no music that I could really, really, um, th that really gave me no heartbeat. I really, I really couldn't feel a lot of it. I was getting a lot of people calling me like beats from off the internet and shit yeah. like that. Like, and I could rap on them, but at the end of the day, I was never like, you know what I'm saying? I was like. Mm. I wish I ain't do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not feeling like that, but I was like, I don't like rapping on this shit because I couldn't really, I, I, I needed something I could get some feeling to. So I got with the right production team and squad and uh, promotion team and squad, you know what I'm saying? The right management team and squad. And it was like a chemistry and something that came together. And um, like, shout out to Godzilla and Big Hank, you know what I'm saying? At this point, at this time, I demanded that I, got the music that I wanted and I liked and that, you know what I'm saying, that I could work with. Like, I didn't just want to be, I didn't just want to drive anything. I want to drive something reliable. You know what I'm saying? Not something that just looked good. I want to drive something that made me feel good. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It made me feel good and like, and I was satisfied with it and they gave me that window and he gave me that outlet. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I had a lot of creative, you know what I'm saying, input and control over it. 
This time they did too though. Like, yeah. I don't even lie. Yeah. Sometimes they were saying doing too much. I'm like, God damn, man, what yeah. you mean? So, and um, but that's another story. But yeah, it was a real. It was it. It was just because it was a comfortable situation. Okay. Like I ain't want. I ain't even like I ain't feel like rapping no more because. Uh. It was a. I mean, the scene. I mean, the scene had got kind of. It changed up a lot for one reason. Yeah. So I was really. I was really like hesitant. Like it, I ain't gonna say it was a fear, but I was uncomfortable with being amongst a lot of the people who say grew up listening to me. Yeah. Like I feel like I was gonna have to be in competition with them and this like that. And it was like, what the fuck are you competing with them for? They can't fuck with you. So they they gotta get some pussy before they have some kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like that. So that's how he was making me feel like, shit, don't worry about that. You know what I'm saying? They trying to learn to do, how to do what you're doing. You ain't got to worry about being scared of getting in the ring with them. Shit, they ain't, they ain't even, you shit, they ain't even, they ain't even at, they ain't even at the MGM Grand yet. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They still that got them goals down. We're going for a couple. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was like he just gave me the confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like what, the, what, 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 what you mean? You know what I'm saying? Like hell yeah, come on, let's do it. So anytime a person willing to put they all into me. You know what I'm saying? Why the fuck? I mean, why the fuck would I be like I don't want to? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I ain't got nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? He ain't like he, you know, just all he asked me for was shit. My guy gave him talent, mm-hmm. so he said, "Why, why not?" Yeah, yeah, yeah but like, who, who are you got on the album, man? Like, who are you got on the uh, the project? Um, I forgot the artist name from Detroit again. Um, what's her name? Rocky Bat. Rocky Bat. Yeah, see, um, I got her, I got her on there. I like I like her. She got she really really uh, she really talented. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't know. It's my first time hearing. I got Nina Stacks on there. She on my weakness. I don't. I think that's on the blues album though. Yeah. I got uh Larry Bird. I got Lil Chicken. Yeah. I got Hood Rich Trevor. Okay. Um <clears throat> I got Steve O. He appeared on there too. <laughs> um Godzilla, Big Hank, Fiend from No Limit. Yeah, yeah. Mystical yeah. from from up from, from No Limit, also Sebo. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I'm forgetting anybody. Yeah, oh yeah, Wave Chappelle and Isdar. Yeah. Man. And they didn't and I don't know how I almost forgot them. They got more like uh, I ain't gonna say they got my favorite song on there, but I really, really, really liked the song they did on there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I really, yeah. So um, it and it was a, it was a fun venture. You know what I'm saying? Especially since I got a chance to um, I got a chance to work with, I got a chance to work with some of the um, I don't want to say up and coming, but I got a chance to work with a lot of the uh, a lot a lot of the a lot of the uh, I ain't gonna even say current. I got a chance to work with a lot of more Milwaukee artists. Yeah. That, you know what I'm saying? Then then before you know what I'm saying? It was like more of a. It was like work, work, working with them. Working with them, I was. I, I, I seen. A, I felt a big sense of pride behind. You know what I'm saying? Seeing how thick it's been with the talent. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's. You know what I'm saying? Instead of it being a divided like old school, new school, I really felt like this time I was working with these guys, and we got. Um, you know what I'm saying? We had more of a camaraderie, and you know what I'm saying? They, they was really, really giving me a lot of tribute, and you know what I'm saying? Acting like they was. You know what I'm saying? Really, really. I'm glad to work with me. You right. know what I'm saying? And that was also all, all them collaborations. They was also put together by Steve O because uh, I don't know what was about it in the past where I didn't didn't work with these guys. Like a lot of them, I never even knew or seen them in person until, uh, matter of fact, I found out how a lot of them looked on your show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I, I, only reason why, and I mean, I couldn't read the record, but the only reason I could recognize some of them as far as appearance go is because I seen you in a room. So. I'm gonna give a shout out to you too. You know what I'm saying? Because you got a good platform. You know what I'm saying? And I want to give you a lot of, you know what I'm saying, a lot of credit for doing what you're doing. I'm proud of you. I, I, I remember, I remember before you was doing this, mm-hmm. and I, you know what I'm saying. You have, but you seem like you be on Dr. Phil's show or something. You be interviewing like you different from me. Like I thought you was a mixtape nigga. Like yeah, like this nigga be interviewing you and shit. And like you gotta have a drink and shit. So you know, you know what I'm <laughs> like damn. It, it almost feel, it almost feel like you know what I'm saying. You gotta see the DA after this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> DA. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, but I, I just want to tell you how proud I am of you, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I how much I appreciate this interview and, and things like that, and I think the growth in you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You ain't no, you ain't just no kid. You know what I'm saying? Who want to do something? You really, really doing it, getting it done. So I want to say shout out to Mixtape Chopper, DJ Jerry, y'all. Yeah, yeah, love, brother. Yeah. I appreciate you, man, for real. Yeah, yeah, like I said, like skip a school. You know what I'm saying? Going to see you at the studio. That that's my first memory of Baby Jew. You know what I'm saying? With okay, Vogue, man. man. So, okay. All right. Shit, you know, you the, I had to get you on here, man. Legend, real life legend for the city, man. Hey, my man. Hell yeah, yeah, but um. Like it's it's something new, you know what I'm saying? I know back in y'all day, a lot of people went. Well, they probably was, but they probably back in caught. y'all day. <laughs> Come on, this dog. is my day. This this is my day right now. It's, of course, I'm, I'm, t- I'm on your show right now. <laughs> like shit, I'm gonna drop some shit back to back. Like I, I ain't just gonna drop no album. I'm dropping two albums. I'm dropping okay. Dr. Grant. I'm dropping the Andrew Green, the Chapter Blues. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. I know I'm messing with yeah. you. <laughs> I'm gonna keep you on your toes. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to. Back in y'all day. <laughs> See, I'm sitting right here. I'm, you're looking at me. 
It's like, motherfucker, you looking at me. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, dino- I'm a dinosaur, but they ain't got my fossil yet. Dude. Right. What you mean? Yeah. That's real. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Well, decades ago. Can I say that? Can I say that? Yeah, man. All right, good luck. I ain't going to poke at your head, Tammy. I ain't going to poke at your head, man. My name, Father Time, and 4145 and all yeah, that. You know what I'm saying? For real. Well, shit, I know back then, you know what I'm saying, they probably had it, they probably didn't have it. Like, uh, it's something new called clout chasing. You know what I'm saying? When you was in your prime, you know what I'm saying, you you, you packing when up. When I was in my prime. Oh, no, I'm fucking with you. Go, go, go. When you was in your prime. Yeah. Well, 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 every, well, every time he tried to give me some condoms or a condiment, he always take it back like. I don't take shit back. <laughs> back when, like, um. You was uh, <laughs> like, like I'm in the history book and all that shit. Like, back when you wrote the Declaration of Gangster Rap, uh, when you and them signed the uh, Bill of Rights, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I feel you though. Come on, I ain't gonna stop you though, boss. <laughs> well, shit, man. A- ancient decades ago. Yeah, you mean, yeah, you mean, yeah, yeah, you mean, you mean, you mean in the beginning. In the beginning, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did you have to deal with any of that that's going on now? Because what people do now, artists, they do something called clout chasing. They, uh, they try to, like, they see you in the mall, you know what I'm saying, try to start a fake beef with you to get some clout, you know what I'm saying, get more followers, get more streams on they shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, how would you would have handled that back in the day when Goldfingers dropped? Man, you, I'm, I'm, I'm really saying you don't know answer that already. I, 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 ain't, I, ain't, I ain't play that shit then, and I ain't going to play it now. No, I ain't handle how to do no shit like that. Right. No, I don't play I don't play them games. Hell yeah. You, you, I don't, nigga better not even say my name on their record. Exactly. I don't play like that, you know what I'm saying? I don't get down like that. I don't do that computer shit, none of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm really, you know what I'm saying? I laugh and joke and I do all that other shit and just that another I rap. But yeah, I'm really am man of the streets. You know what I'm saying? I am. I, I'm gangster music, but I am gangster music. I don't just do it. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. And you know what I'm saying? I got. You know what I'm saying? I got a family. You know what I'm saying? That I probably want to. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't even. Look, no, I ain't, I'm gonna leave it at that. Like we ain't gonna, we ain't, no, I ain't gonna deal with no cloud chasing. Like, really? I'm glad you explained to me what it was. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so cloud chasers, get stay the fuck with you, man. Y'all, man, y'all, let's, all home, <laughs> let's all go home. Let's all go home to our families. Right. No, don't, <laughs> don't, don't chase cloud with me. Right. <laughs> don't be chasing shit about a new suit. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> for real. For oh, real. Put your yeah. Hat. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But, but shit, like, uh, like, like, what's your take on like just rap in general? Like, not uh, in Milwaukee and just period. Like, like, how do you feel about the new music that's out right now? I love, I love music. Period. I love all of it. I mean, and I was at, a, and I was at a period where I was like, ugh. And you know what? And I'm gonna say it was my fault for being ignorant and not listening. Okay. So as soon as I, as soon as I looked at the image and I seen the image, I, didn't, I didn't because I didn't understand it because that's not what I was doing, but. Then I got a different respect for it once I did hear and see what's going on and what's coming up. And then that's just like, that's just like when we went to wearing big jeans. But it, it, I mean, a person that used to wear bell bottoms wasn't tripping on us because we wore big clothes. So you know what I'm saying? Me judging somebody because they had uh, skinny jeans on, this that, and the other. Like I ain't had no reason to question their sexual preference and all that shit behind it. I felt like that was a that was an ignorant way of thinking and stuff like that before I even listened to these cats. And I feel like. The music that's currently going on now, just like always, it, it's always been like I don't judge it at all. I just like I just like music anyway. So right. anybody who doing anybody who using their craft to do something other than wrong, you know what I'm saying? And they in the studio and they trying to create art, you know what I'm saying? I respect them as artists, you know what I'm saying? Because right. I'm a fellow artist, so I feel like anybody who make music is one of my colleagues, you know what I'm saying? I wish and I wish them well and I wish the best, you know what I'm saying? And and they did not, and I come to realize they do have a lot of talent, and it's hard growing up as a young man in the damn age that we're in right now. You know what I'm saying? So even if you even got the time to want to go or sit down and write a song or write a rap, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to go back to you. Shit, in my day, shit, it wasn't no, um, it wasn't no phone and all this shit. It wasn't nobody, ain't one of all these guns. Like, it wasn't quite, it wasn't quite like it is right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't. Like it was much, much different. And I now I understand when I used to hear my parents say, Well, back when we was coming up, because I'd be like, damn. So, hey, like hey, this hey. shit wild as hell. Like I don't and I, I see these young guys and what they go through and what they're up against on a regular basis. So I got a whole different respect for them when I hear them making these songs. I had to stop and listen to what they were saying before I started judging them. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not a judge anyway. If I don't like something, it just don't exist in my world. I I, I won't say if it's good or bad. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I just love music, period. I love rap, and I love all kind of music. So, yeah. yeah, but who you like, man? Like, who you a, who you a, a hit on replay? You know what I'm saying? Who drew a, like, bump? Um, 
I don't know if I hit it on replay because, like I said, I like all music, so I don't just listen to one genre of music. Okay. So if you ask me a question like that, it depends on what day it is. It could be Lil Baby, it could be Al Green, it could be Michael Jackson, like okay. it could be any given, it could be any given given genre of music from any given day or time because I, I'm a fan of music. Okay. So I'm not a person who hit replay and stuff like that. I got a playlist that I always play all the time, but I like different. It depends on what day it is and how I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? It can go from anywhere from the 70s all the way to 2020 of the music that I like because, I, like I said, I'm a fan of music, period. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I ain't got to put it on repeat, especially on this to the radio. They're going to play this six or seven times <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I ain't even got to put nothing on repeat. They're going to repeat it for me. Hell yeah. By the time I get from here to my house, I'm going to be hurt. Same song four or five times. Oh, yeah. I like I like I like I like a lot of the, I like a lot of the current I like a lot of the current artists that's out here. Like I really can't even like right now. I would be stuttering trying to you know what I'm saying come up with the names because depending on what day and time it is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you know what I'm saying, you had a, a dope career, man. Like <clears throat> not just in Milwaukee, but just worldwide. You know what, mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like a right. lot of people don't know that shit. But right. like, how you feel about the people to say, man? Like I think Drew would have been bigger. You know what I'm saying? Like what? Like why wasn't Drew? Bigger than what he was. Why did Why did he exceed? You know what I'm saying. More than he already did in the industry. Succeed. Yes. <laughs> um, it depends on what success is and what big is to you. Like I feel like to even be able to be doing an interview right now about making music or to be able to record an album right now, I am larger than life. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and as far as I don't know, whoever might say something like that, even whether they saying it as a whether they saying it as a, whether they saying it because they're concerned or whether they saying it as a, you know what I'm saying, as like a diss or whatever. The whole thing about that is it's a million, it's a million people like me, and I am larger than life to a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? So they just, I'm just not larger than life to them. You know what I'm saying? And to me, it, on the, I mean, I don't know if it's about monetary things like that, but I'm blessed to be still alive, walking. I can eat when I want to. I can go to the bathroom. I'm free. I'm free. I got my freedom. I own my own property. I own my house. You know what I'm saying? And, Whatever the case may be, and like right now, I'm still recording records right now, and I got people who still waiting on my album, and people still interviewing about me, my, about my music. Yeah, so, sure. uh, and I don't know too many people, you know what I'm saying, like in a two, three hundred mile radius, that you know what I'm saying, got my got my catalog that I have, yeah, you sure. know what I'm saying. So, or either, or I mean, I don't know if these people that say this do music or not, or if they understand it or not. But some of them, they, either, they might be a fan of whatever. Some people just be like, man, I wish he would have, you know what I'm saying? That's because they, they, don't, they don't understand what goes on. But as long as they love me, I mean, it don't matter, you know what I'm saying, how big, it depends on what big and success is to them. Right. I feel like just to be able to survive and still be able to, you know what I'm saying, use my gift that I have from God, you know what I'm saying, I am larger than life because I'm still living life. So I don't, you know what I'm saying, I don't really bite off into that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, cause people people have their reasons for saying what they say. Right. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's just concern and wonder. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, what I got to say to those people is, I mean, don't worry, cause I'm grateful. I'm yeah. great. I'm grateful for every opportunity I had to still be able to talk. Period. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or rap or make music at all. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? So to me, just for one person acting for my autograph, shit, I'm that make me. I, I mean, that, that that's worth more money than anybody could ever be bigger than any check that I ever could get. Just for a nigga say, Drew, can I get your autograph? Shit, I thought that I thought that's something that would never happen. I'd be, I'm, I'm, I'd be in school practicing my autograph. Now I, I still write that same one down today. Yes, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In that, in that order. Uh, yeah. You already know what the fuck it is, man. DJ Jerry, a.k.a. the voice of the streets. The 414 father, man. Baby Drew. What's happening? Oh, me? <laughs> Ricardo Moore, shit. I'm feeling pretty good. I want to send a shout out to Ricardo Moore, um, because that's why I just took a shout out while he's trying to ask me, what's <laughs> trying to ask me what's happening. Shit, trying to catch me off balance, see how quick I am on my feet. Yeah. <laughs> not too quick. I just drunk on some hot charcoal. <laughs> nah, this shit, this shit real smooth though, and shit like that. But but this all, I mean, this all good. Shout out to the cameraman, and shit. Shout um, out Johnny, man. Shout out Beyond, man. Yeah, up, Johnny, and back up. Nah, no, I'm just going. <laughs> nah, hey, yep. I, I want to give a shout out to him. Yep. <laughs> yeah, 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 y'all fucking called him, man. You know what I'm saying? For y'all videos and shit because he ain't got enough work, but he got a whole lot already, for real. The man is real, real good. I want to give shout out to Everybody don't come on here and do that, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Man, call him. Yeah, call him because we, we finna call him. He could do he doing my next video. <laughs> yeah, damn, Dr. Grant. Hell uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's followed up by uh, uh, the blues album I got coming out, the Andrew Green blues chapter. So that's followed up right behind 
Dr. Grind, the Dr. Grind project, so which is got the uh my weakness. So yeah. on the right. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. I know that already. You wanna talk about that or what? No, <laughs> no we good, man. You covered all that shit. Oh. Hell yeah. Mixtape Trappers Radio, man, baby Drew. What's happening?